Okay. All right, so we've got our uh, minutes from our last meeting on March the 23rd. I know several of you were here with us on that meeting. It's a fairly short meeting. Does anybody see any uh, corrections or changes or anything to those minutes before I approve those? Okay, if not, I'll go ahead and approve these minutes by signing those. Okay, we've got uh, some business here to take care of. Well, we've got uh, to adopt the ordinance providing the speed limit change. This is uh, to adopt the state of, excuse me, documentation from the Georgia Department of Transportation updating lowering of the speed limit at Saddle Ridge Elementary and Middle School from 55 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour. Also, the document's increasing the speed limit on Rampon Road from Ringo Road to Lake Howard Road from 35 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour. So, many of you know there's been several traffic accidents in front of Saddle Ridge Elementary. Uh, the sheriff submitted the information to the state. And we have gotten their approval back to be able to lower that speed limit during the school times. So I believe the documents here show, bear with me here a second, I think it was on the last page. Yes, from 30 minutes prior to the commencement of the time of school to 30 minutes after, both in the a.m. and the p.m. So we'll be able to uh, post those sign changes where the flashing lights will come on and show that reduction of the speed limit. And then the Round Pond Road to Ringo Road, um, excuse me, Round Pond Road from Ringo Road to Lake Howard Road, that in the past had been 45 miles an hour. It got reduced on the last study that was done by the state. Uh, we received uh, several inquiries from the local citizens requesting that be raised back up. So the sheriff also resubmitted that one. We did get approval from the state on this letter dated March the 20th to be able to make these two changes. So y'all see that in your packet and all the other speed limit roads that they have approved at the last meeting. Is there any questions to this, comments? Okay, if not, I'll sign this and approve this. Clerk will so sign and date that. Okay, we've got a proclamation here tonight uh, declaring April as Alcohol Awareness Month. And then we've got a couple of special guests that would like to speak to this as well. It reads, whereas drinking by persons under the age of 21 is illegal, yet people aged 12 to 20 drink 11% of the alcohol consumed in the United States, and whereas nearly 10 million young people aged 12 to 20 report that they have consumed alcohol in the past 30 days. According to the 2016 Georgia Student Health Survey, the average age of the first alcohol, the average age of first alcohol use in Walker <coughs> County is 13 years, of all, 13 years old, and whereas kids who drink are more likely to be victims of violent crimes, to be involved in alcohol-related traffic crashes, and to have serious school-related problems. And whereas alcohol is the most commonly used addictive substance in the United States, whereas young people who begin drinking before the age of 15 are four times more likely to develop alcohol dependencies than those who begin drinking at age 21. And whereas alcohol is the deadliest drug for American teenagers, 16 years old and is more likely to die from an alcohol related problem than any other cause. And whereas excessive drinking is responsible for more than 4,300 deaths among underage youth every year. Whereas kids who have <coughs> conversations with their parents and learn a lot 
about the danger of alcohol and drug use are 50% less likely to use alcohol and drugs than those who didn't have such conversations. Whereas supportively family environments and associated with lower rates of alcohol use adolescents and therefore Walker County Soul Commissioner Shannon Whitfield now joined Catoosa County Prevention Initiative and the National Council of Alcoholism and Drug Dependency and do hereby proclaim that April 2017 is Alcohol Awareness Month in Walker County. As the sole commissioner, I, uh, I also call upon all the citizens, parents, governmental agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, hospitals, schools, and colleges in Walker County to support efforts that will provide early education about alcoholism and the addictions and increase support for individuals and families coping with alcoholism. Through these efforts together, we can prove, provide hope, health, and healing for those in our community who are facing challenges with alcohol use and abuse. So I'll sign this proclamation to make April the Awareness Month. I think we have some ladies that would like to speak about this as well. Hi, I'm Candy Hollander. I'm the project coordinator with Katusa Prevention Initiative. This is Kay Bright. She is um, part of the team. She works with me to address uh, underage drinking. Uh, some of you may not know that we've worked in your county actually for about five years. Um, we've been in Saddle Ridge. We teach prevention education. We have had billboards in your area and, and have participated in local events, the festivals in, in the square and the, the music festival. We've been down here for that. Um, you might, re might remember the Be The Wall message. Uh, Damon Raines has done some PSAs and Sheriff Wilson has done some PSAs for us as well. We also work with um, the sophomores, not only in Catoosa County, but Walker County and uh, Whitfield County and in Dade County. We provide uh, an, an annual event. It's the team phase where everybody, all the students come in up to the colonnade on campus and they participate, what is it, about an hour and a half, two hours a piece. Um, and w they go through scenarios of what could possibly happen um, with um, alcohol use. Um, we also have a grant that covers, this year's grant covers not only alcohol, but we'll be working with marijuana in your community as well to build awareness about the dangers of that. Um, when we presented this to Catoosa County, they were shocked that the um, proclamation reads that uh, alcohol is one is the most addictive, and the fact is is that's true. It's because of availability uh, is legal, and um, um, because it's legal, there's that stigma attached to it or the perceptions attached to it that it must be okay. You know, it's not that dangerous. It's not as bad as other drugs, um, but you know. Um, most people in this room probably would raise your hand if I asked you if you had anyone that you know that has a problem with alcohol or a, or a family with alcohol. Hey, I was born and raised in Walker County. I graduated from Lafayette High School. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, but it was a problem then, and I'm sure it's a problem now. Uh, so we're going to continue to work with you guys down here. And hopefully you'll start uh, seeing a little more of us and our faces will become just a little bit more familiar with you as we work with the youth in your community. Thank you. I appreciate y'all including the Walker County students into your May's project that y'all did at the Colonnade. And I know that's a big event that y'all do and both of my teenage daughters have been through that going through their high school. And it has a strong impact on the kids. Y'all do a good job on that. So thank you for well, making us support. You need to know that your county too participates in it. We've got the law enforcement, EMS, all your people come and well for a week. I mean it takes us a day to set up and 
uh, actually four days, all day long. So we're busing those two students in and busing them out from all over. And I'm so proud to be working with uh, your uh, emergency people here. They're great people to work with. And, and just by that one event, we've become uh, able to know all of them. And I love your sheriff, too. He's awesome. That's a great event. Appreciate y'all coming tonight as well. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, we've got uh, let's see a couple of things here. Is this the make sure the resolution for these? Okay, um, read one of these here. These are all the same, except it's got different people's names, so I won't read them all through. Right. Okay, this is uh, Two Standard, which is the company that provides Walker County Commissioner Employee 401A plan. Uh, it's dated April the 6th. It says uh, plan administrator. Administrator changed the standard Walker County Commissioner Employee 401, 401A plan. Removing of the current administra administrator, B.B. Haskell, of the standard Walker County Commissioner Employee 401A plan and removing of the signing authorities of Bridget Garrett of the standard Walker County Commissioner's Employee 401 pl plan. Please be advised that effective January 1, 2017, I was elected as sole commissioner of Walker County, Georgia. As such, I am the standard plan administrator with full authority to sign and to delegate additional county officials to sign as necessary documents regarding the standard Walker County Commissioner's Employee 401A plan. That's a mouthful. So we'll sign this here, send to them. These are just uh, basically the top part of the letters the same. It says, please be advised that Rebecca Wooten, county clerk, has the authority to sign the standard application for employees enrolling in the standard Walker County Commissioner Employee 401A plan and all other plan authorizations. So this gives our new clerk, Rebecca Wooten, who's here to my left tonight, the authority to uh, sign on behalf of the county for enrollment of folks to the plan, any other related documents as clerk. And also we have one here, <clears throat> please advise that Charlene Robertson, our human resource director, who's also to my left, has the authority to sign the standard application for employees enrolling in the standard Walker County Commissioner Employee 401A plan and all other plan authorizations. So that way our human resource director can also in this matter. Okay, so that takes care of that. Okay, we have um, okay. We have a resolution here that's attached a list of property currently assigned to the Walk County Sheriff's Office that is unusable, unserviceable, and surplus. Uh, Steve Wilson is requesting that I declare the property unserviceable and provide, provided by law and allowed to be disposed accordingly to law. So they have eight old Samson Galaxy cell phones. So this is a resolution stating that we've come before this public meeting and we're surplusing out eight old cell phones. Any questions about any of this? Yes, if it's items that we're able to sell by putting on govdeals.com or uh, if they're public auction, any of that money would come back to the county. Uh, so we track those items. 
Okay, that will adjourn the official portion of our meeting, and we'll open up the floor to any uh, open discussion or open comment tonight. Who wants to be first? Um, yes, sir, Mr. Kevin. I'm concerned about our Marsh Wharton House area. It's never open to guests. Uh, when we need volunteers who will come and serve that area during holidays when uh, we get town guests in because this is an attraction that very important to Walker County National and Georgia history and we need to be able to make it available or else people, that's why people won't come. It's never open when it's supposed to be or it's never open during the week when they come or holidays when they come in. Okay, good point, thank you. Who's next? How about the status of what's going on with the landfill? Uh, Payne Gilley's here with us tonight. He's our new manager at the landfill. And Payne, you started what about month ago? One month ago today. So you want to kind of give an overview update of anything? Well, we're, we've uh, enacted a lot of policies and procedures to help the workflow um, out there, and it uh, will also increase productivity. We're um, trying back on, uh, we're, we're shopping around and getting prizes from three separate vendors before we purchase things. Um, we're using more forms and, and, and procedures than I guess were there before. And um, you know, there's a couple of folks that we're, that we're, we're two people less than we were a month ago, or one person less than we were a month ago. What so about, what about your commercial time. customers? How did that work out with the increase in the fees? Well, we, we, um, we have lost a, a couple of the C and D haulers, um, but that's only been since the first of the month. And I'm looking at that data to see, you know, look, I'm looking at trends. It's still kind of early in that model. But, you know, we're, we are looking at trends. And we're building the databases for the same thing. And also, there's going, what's going on? Yeah. 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 Yes, Kevin. improve the money and also reduce the landfill going, what's going in the landfill? Well, I, I've talked with uh, a couple of landfills in the country that are out of state that have recycling programs and um, we're getting ideas from them. They've been very helpful. Um, you, you know, when, when someone brings something to the landfill, we really can't take it from them. It's better if there's an off-site location or if they decide to donate something they can so that that has been that is being discussed yes. the reason I'm asking is I've gone with a few people and like we have a lot of metal and stuff that could be sold for scrap and bring more money into the coffers reduce the impact on the landfill and uh, then uh, maybe uh, later get think about getting an incinerator uh, to uh, uh, a recyclable incinerator so there's no odor or smoke coming out of it that would uh, again reduce the impact on the landfill and maybe produce heat or something that the county could use um, and also methane uh, the methane produced off some of that could be re or, you know, put in some kind of, I'm sorry. Use for well, energy? Yes. Unfortunately, due to the age of the, the, the landfill, mm -hmm. we're on the tail end of the methane production cycle. So that's that's not really going to okay. uh, work you. for us with the, the, uh, the closed portion. Um, and C and D material really doesn't generate the methane that household waste does. So it's not likely that we could do that for the CMD. Um, we do have a metal recycling program in effect where we stage all of our metals at a certain portion of the landfill. We've got our, our truck up and going, so we're ready to start moving that metal to the recycler. 
and those funds do go back into the, the county coffers. And when we take in the refrigerators and stuff, they have to be put in a separate area. Is that due to the uh, um, ozone uh, depletion? We do have a refrigerant recovery system, um, but that metal goes in with the general metals, and that's all taken to the recycler. Good. What else? Yeah, I'm still concerned about our roads. I know we ain't got a lot of money, but uh, about the market going. So I tell you, they're getting more hazardous all the time. And, uh, We've got a contract out right now where they're going to restripe and put new signs up on 75 miles of roads and on county roads. <clears throat> the problem is it's it was a state-funded program, and when they let that contract, the company that got that award has until December 31st to get that work done. Yeah. So we're we're at their mercy of when they get that done, but it's a lot of the roads that are highly traveled that the lines are depleted and faded away. And yeah. so hopefully before we get to winter next year, they'll get that done for us. Yeah, because on Center Road Road, they're just practically gone. Yeah. And there's some pretty deep ditches in them things. And that's a speedway through there, and uh, I don't know if we've got no speed signs or not. The average hasn't been like that, <laughs> but uh, they come around on the wrong side of the road, and uh, it, it's really dangerous. Yeah. What was the name of the road? Center Grove. Center Grove? Yeah, it's a couple of miles from Center Grove, from 27 to Center Grove, or to 95. It's two miles through there. Okay, and we'll, we'll check that there. one on our list and see if that's on that yeah. list or not. And also on Jones Road 504, there's a bad eyesore on that and needs to be removed. It's just a rat bed, really what it is. Trailer's been burnt. Okay. Time. So from a code enforcement, 504 Jones Road. Yeah. Is that Lafette address? Yeah. Rock Springs. Lafette? Lafette. Lafette address, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Shannon, also up here at the Marsh House, the road's actually falling apart. I mean, I've had to step out and pick chunks up where a car wouldn't go with the pitch it into the gutter because it, it's just yeah. chunking out. Well, the uh, the main 27 road would be a state road, and then the back side road would, would be a city road. So, City of Lafayette would have to take care of okay. the it's, road there by side. It, it's Main Street. It's, it's the Main Street. Okay, that would be a state road, so that would be the state DOT that would have to address any repairs on that road. Can you contact them, please? Yeah, we'll add, she'll add that and we'll email them on that. Okay, good points. Anybody else? It's quite a bunch. <laughs> You'll be seeing uh, more activity as we go through the month as we're up increasing our uh, code officers, code enforcement, and getting those vehicles and those folks trained. So we have uh, two new code officers that started Monday this week, and we're going to be emphasize, emphasizing on code enforcement on the north end of the county. We've set up our first zone, which will cover from uh, Highway 2 to Old Chattanooga Valley Road to the state line, and then McFarland Road to the city limits of Rossville. So that uh, zone that encompasses that area of the north end of the county, uh, they're already started working on that area and going street by street and working on code enforcement. Has the old county offices or the tag office already been handed over to the city of Los Angeles? It's still county property. It's still county property. And, uh, Having conversations with David Hamilton with the city of Lafette, we're uh, we're going to maintain that as county property, and we're looking to uh, try to get some grant funding to be able to renovate a portion of that building and hopefully move juvenile court into a portion of that building. Because they're needing more space, and uh, they're very excited about moving into a portion of that building once we get it renovated. Anything else? 
Okay, well that concludes our meeting. Appreciate you coming out tonight and look forward to seeing you. We won't have a meeting next week. Our next meeting will be the last Thursday of this month. So hope you can come out and join us the last Thursday of this month.